joining us on Live with Squacky. This is season two of our show, and we're so excited. Our special guest today is Ginger White. She's an audiobook narrator, and she's been in the industry for a little bit over a year, but she's got a great story behind her, and we can't wait to hear all about it. So, Ginger, let's start out by having us tell you what your background is and how you got started in the voiceover industry. Well, way back in 1993, I went to a broadcasting school and I knew that was just to do radio. And I did the radio for about three years. Um, I actually wanted to go into voiceover and I think I did one voiceover through a website that I'm not sure if it was voice one, two, three or not. This is like over 10 a lot of years. Um, but I, 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 I only did one. And so everything and I needed to make money and live and, and pay the bills. So it had been in the back burner and for quite a while until I did a line in a play uh, last summer. And it was actually for a, um, uh, I, let's see, it was one line. And after the after the play was over, I, I asked the producer, hey, I still want to continue to do stuff like this. And she kind of got me in touch with um, my current coach, a narrator coach, uh, Sean Pratt. And um, I've been working with him for the last year at, with nonfiction. And um, so far, I, I liked it so much, I quit my job and now I do this full time. <laughs> That's amazing. What a great story. Yeah, Sean Pratt is one of my absolute favorites. I've had the chance to work with him a little bit in the past through my conference that I run, and he's just so fantastic, like really one of the best coaches out there. So that's that's really great. That's so cool that you just were like, okay, I'm doing this, and you did it. That's amazing. <laughs> I always love to hear stories like that. So what genre, I mean, we already know a little bit that you're specializing in audiobook narration. So uh, is that the main genre of voiceover that you specialize in? Um, at the moment, yes. Um, I I actually prefer nonfiction, although I haven't I haven't auditioned for a lot of fiction so far. But I've been doing fiction uh, nonfiction, and uh, I'd really like to get into e-learning and commercial voiceover, television voiceover, and and documentaries. Documentaries fascinate me, <laughs> so so I, I'd like to do that in the future. Yeah, I could totally see that um, your voice would be a good fit for those kinds Thank of projects. You. So that's really cool. Um, so your website says, vibrant, always caring, interesting, and easy listening narrator. This is the motto, um, like I said, used on your website. Would you say this is a pretty accurate description of your voice and character? You know, um, actually talking, because uh, I've been coaching over the last, almost the last year, it's not really, it's, it's not really that accurate because I keep improving and it's almost like I'm evolving as a voice actor. So I don't know where I'm going to end up, <laughs> but I, yeah. I like, you know, I, people have told me that I sound vibrant and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. I definitely think that, you know, and um, you do definitely evolve as a voice actor as you go through the years and the trainings that you go to and the different coaches that you work with. And I think that's something that's so important, especially for voice actors starting out to know is that you do have to keep training. It's like a constant thing. You can't ever stop and just go, man, I'm really good. I'm going to stop. Yeah. Training. <laughs> but don't do that. Or you're just going to keep improving, you know, and you're just going to kind of stay, you know, in the same place. And I, I think that's, you know, that's really something that people need to know and kind of understand training and learning and growing and staying inspired and things like that. So what would you say you've learned since starting in the industry that you feel is very valuable information? Um, well, actually, this, I don't give in to the negativity, the negativity, don't give in to the negativity. That's, that's number one, I've noticed, because even, you know, you meet people that are like, oh, don't do this or don't do that. I'm like, okay, then I'm not going to ask a question anymore. <laughs> but yeah. just, you know, just st stick with people that are positive influences on you and, and be persistent. That, that's what I've discovered. 
in the yeah. short time. <laughs> that I always kind of go by. And I think it's so true. And it's totally what I'm all about is positivity and everything I try to do and promote. It's, you know, there are so many negative people out there and especially, you know, people that are in the industry, people that are not in the industry, the entertainment industry as a whole, I think can be people can almost kind of pull you into that if you're not being careful. And if you fall into that negative sort of thinking, it can totally drag you down and almost break you, you know what I mean? And you don't want that to happen. So it's really, really important to, you know, surround yourself with positive people that have, you know, uh, one of my favorite people in the industry is Nicola Richards because she's like, I call her the positivity princess. Just say that three of your top keys to success say uh, definitely persistence Um, always challenge yourself Um, always try something new because sometimes I'll audition for things I'm like oh I'm never gonna get this and I get it I'm like oh (laughs) I'm like I you know do something new that you don't think that maybe you should be doing I mean maybe just try your best at something that doesn't mean you're not gonna get it but um, also getting to know people right Yeah, definitely. Um, um, you know, honestly, I could really improve on that. <laughs> but um, I do, I'm a member of the VoiceOver Network, and I love, I love getting the Buzz magazine, like, every few months when they bring yeah. it out. In fact, I've, you know, got a copy right here. <laughs> nice. I love that. Nice. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Perfect. I really need to start listening to pertinent podcasts and, and webinar. I, I do, um, I'm a member of the APA as well, and, and I, I get on to their webinars when they have something that sparks my interest. And yeah, just, you know, co- the constant learning, I think, helps me. And, you know, it's not like I, I don't have a day job. So I, <laughs> I should, like, if I take a break from an audiobook, I need to, like, listen to a podcast because you know I need yeah to, I need to learn too <laughs> yeah and I think that's just something that over time you know you'll kind of get into a routine a little bit more even of a routine of what you what you're interested in and what you want to be doing and sort of set up you know the types of things that you want to do to keep learning so that's totally normal so what I was trying to jump into before, but wasn't time yet, is how important do you feel marketing is for voiceover? Um, and what do you do to market yourself that's been successful? Um, well, it's marketing. I mean, marketing is really, I've heard that it can make a break a business. So, and essentially I'm a business. So yeah, I have to go at, go out and market myself and, In this day and age, I kind of have to be very careful about the political things I say because, you know, I have very specific views and certain things about me, but um, now it's just, if I could, you know, I just talk uh, talk about voiceover and put up cat videos, that'll help. I mean, just that's more fun. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, I really, I do, I do think it's, um, it's, you know, that, there's there's basically like two types of of people out there. Well, there's a lot more than two, but I'm just going to yeah. talk about two. Is just you know you have the people that are like that are going to voice their political views no matter what, and you if you're going to be like friends with them on whatever social media platform, you just have to like go with it and agree or disagree with them or whatever or just keep scrolling. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's totally fine, you know, and then there's people like me that are never going to say their political views only because I'm not super interested in politics. And it's not that I don't care, but I just try to stay completely out of it. Like, that's yeah. just me, because if I'm not educated about what I'm trying to talk about, then it's not a good idea for me to be like, well, this is what I think. And then people will be like, really, really though? Like, that's yeah. not what's happening at all. So I just, I just use, you know, the same kind of mentality I use when I'm, I'm teaching French, which is, you're not allowed to talk about politics. And I just use that throughout my social media as well. I just don't, I don't ever bring it in, you know, it's, it's safer. It's playing it safe, you know, 
But that's not to say that you you can't do it. It's just that, right. you know, like you said, it is a business and you are marketing yourself as a business. And so everything that you put out there is going to be seen by people that follow you, you know, right. and if they're interacting with your posts and things like that, it's, it is a little bit risky, but you know, yeah. I mean, some people do it anyway, and they're still like super loved and successful. Yeah. So I mean, I, I think it can go either way. It's just dependent on who your, who your followers are, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I think, I think um, go ahead. Uh, I think I've I've had great success with Twitter and I've met a lot of really a lot of interesting people on Twitter and some have asked me you know hey do you want to do some stuff for us and I'm like oh, sure yeah I'll try that <laughs> so yeah it's just um, separating yeah. my personal and business I think it's really important um, especially on social media to kind of separate what you put out there as a voice actor and what you put out there as you as a person, like yeah. kind of, you know what I mean? Like you as a business and you as like you as a person, not as a voice actor, you know? And that's why a lot of times people have like a business account and then they have a personal account and maybe their personal account is like private, you know, and then their business right. account is public because you want people to see it, you know? So like me, like a voiceover company and then me as a voice actress. And I don't really, hardly ever put anything personal on either of them, you know, mm -hmm. because I don't ever put anything about my family <laughs> usually or stuff like that, simply for the fact that I want to keep it separate, you know, the same right. thing on Instagram, you know, it's like, I do have voice actors who follow me, my personal account on Instagram, but it's like, I only let people follow my, me as a voice actor account. If I like, if I know them and I trust them and I know they're not going to like, I don't know. There's a lot of weirdos out there, to be honest. Like, that's really what it comes down to. My friend was saying the other day, like, don't you think that's like really limiting? Like who's going to follow you? Like with only, you know, a couple hundred followers on Instagram, don't you want to build that up? I'm like, yeah, my business account, but even people on my business account, I block. Yeah. Sometimes if they're like, you know, it's like what you put out there if it's public, can be seen by anyone, especially, right. I'm just talking about Instagram right now. So like, if, if you try to follow me and you're a whole, like, this is just an example, okay? But like, kind of an extreme one. If your whole page of pictures is like machine guns. And yeah, like, that would bother me. <laughs> yeah, and, and like, <laughs> like, maybe you just like that and that's fine, but like, how is that relevant to my voiceover business? It's yeah. not like, I'm not really like, I'm not, you know, interested in that. So guess what? You're getting blocked. Like, it's just, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? Like you have to be careful, like even who you let follow you on a business because it's, it's a representation of like what you're trying to put out there. And I think that's really important for people to know. Yeah. Yeah, and I've I've basically I'll let anyone follow me, but that doesn't mean I'll follow them back because I kind of yeah. look at their I look at their profile and I'm like, okay, are there is this a real person? And yeah. what, what are their what are their political affiliations? <laughs> <laughs> and and I have I have only had to block one person on Twitter, so that you know I'm like, this is not a dating site. I'm not on here to get dates. So. Yeah. The, you know when they're say hi beautiful I'm like that's nice but <laughs> yeah <laughs> let's think about why I'm here yeah I know yeah. I know I totally understand where you're coming from and like all the platforms are totally different and and social yeah. media is such a huge topic you know it's it's really like you could talk about it for hours but I'm, I'm very passionate about it you know because I, I actually spend a ton of time on social media which is probably way more time than I should and it's um it's funny because like I have an iPhone and when it updated to this new um, update, whatever, you know, yeah. it's like, I'm horrible with like technological terms. Okay. But you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It has like this thing now where it says like how much time you spend on social media and how much time you've been productive and how much time you've been creative. Right. So the first uh -oh. day this comes up on my phone and it's like, Time on social media, one hour, 43 minutes. Time of productivity, nine minutes. Time being created, four minutes. I was like, what? <laughs> I, was like, I was like, no, you need to get your life together, okay? This is like your entire 
day is like spend on social media and like where's the rest of the time it was so funny I was like I don't like this app I don't like it at all <laughs> I don't need to know how much time I'm not being productive okay <laughs> yeah the, the time can get away from you <laughs> definitely so what are you working on now or what have you worked on recently that you're allowed to talk about well um I don't know. I'm I've got two books I'm actually work one I'm not finished with yet. Well, not one of them I'm finished with, but um, one of them I'm in the proofing, um, I'm proofing it for mistakes and all that, um, which is, it's called Seismic City by Joanna Dill. Um, it's about the earthquake of the San Francisco earthquake of 1906. And I think so thus far, that has been the most interesting book I've ever had to, ever been able to narrate because I'm like, I didn't know half of that. And that San Francisco was built on, you know, filled land, or some of it was, but um, it's just a really interesting book, and, and the next one is um, Globalizing Music Education, which is interesting, because I have several friends that teach music, like either music classes, or um, teach piano, and voice, and, and are musicians, um, so they, you know, that's really interesting about the globalization part of it. Um, and the, the author, I still haven't figured out how to say her name yet. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just going through chapter two right now on that one. But um, yeah, I hope those will be on Audible within the next couple of months. Definitely have to look out for those. That's really cool. Um, so what are some upcoming trainings, workshop, conferences that you're planning to attend and why? Well, I'm going to be attending the, the MAVO conference in November. I'm really looking forward to that because that'll be my very first voiceover conference ever. Um, I'm just, in, uh, I've like barely know anyone in the industry. So it'll be really nice to meet, um, meet, meet uh, Rachel Naylor from the voiceover network. And although, although I met, um, Johnny Heller in a at APAC, it'll be nice to actually go through one of his, um, oh, what are, what are they called? The breakout sessions? Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going <gonna, laughs> to do his breakout session. And um, yeah, because uh, I don't know very many people in the industry, like in person. So it, it'll be nice to yeah. kind of collaborate and learn from them. That's awesome. Well, we're really excited that you're coming to it and I so appreciate the support and you've been great over the past I don't know how long it's been now like 18 months that we've been like advertising for this but um in case you guys are not signed up yet it's the Mid-Atlantic Voiceover Conference taking place on November 9th 10th and 11th in Herndon Virginia and we still have a few tickets left so if you still need a ticket ticket you can go to midatlanticvo.com and click on the banner or click on registry here and it will take you direct directly to the eventbrite page which will show you which tickets are still available we still have general admission tickets for the whole weekend plus we have a few one day tickets available for saturday only or saturday and friday night um, we're not doing any one day tickets for just sunday so you have a couple of options and then of course the breakout sessions are also on there and we have some amazing guest speakers this year, including our keynote speaker, Kari Walgren, plus a ton of other guest speakers like John <laughs> Heller, Celia Siegel, and Mark Scott, and Tom Deere, and Sarah Sherman, and Herb Moore, and Sunday News, and I keep forgetting the list, Dan Friedman, and Hugh Edwards, <laughs> and Rachel Naylor, and the list goes on and on. Gabby Nistico, I'm trying not to forget anyone. But anyway, <laughs> the whole point is that we're very, it's really an opportunity, like you said, to meet people in the industry. and. We have Joe Cipriano coming this year, who is an outstanding, um, you know, actor in the industry, has been in it for such a long time, and he's such an expert, and the fact that he is, you know, coming to our event is amazing, and we're so, so excited to have such a spectacular lineup of people to learn from, and the great thing about it is that it's small, so you won't feel overwhelmed, so for your first conference, it's a perfect one to choose because the breakout sessions are list limited to 12 to 15 people. Wow. And so you won't feel overwhelmed. So the general sessions, like with the keynote address and things like that, you'll have the whole audience with, uh, you know, the keynote address. And
And some of the other general sessions will be a slightly larger audience because, you know, for our sponsors and things like that, we're giving them an exclusive audience where they have, you know, everybody in one session. But the conference is limited to 120 attendees on purpose so that we have the opportunity to keep it small. It's almost like a VIP session with them because mm -hmm. you're limited to 12 people. And I believe that his sessions are limited to 12 people. So, um, and most of them are. So we did that on purpose so that people feel like they walk out of the session and they're like, wow, I got to, you know, I got to train with Kari Walgren, who, by the way, as our keynote, hardly ever does, you know, she hardly ever teaches at conferences. Oh, wow. She goes to like Comic Cons and she, you know, she does panels and things like that. And so it's a really, really unique opportunity for people to come in and be able to train with her and actually learn, you know, like hands on with somebody who is wildly successful in Hollywood booking over 450, you know, cartoon. Wow. And, and it's just crazy. So I'm very excited about it. And that's my little plug for my conference. <laughs> and um, but yeah, so I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because I know that, you know, I know that you're coming and I know that you're excited about really supportive um, it, to the event and I really appreciate it. So I wanted to say thank you for that. And um, yeah, well, so welcome. thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. We'll put the link to your website in the description of this video, but tell everyone what your website is and your social media handles so that they can find you and connect. Oh, um, my, let's, what is my social media handle? Um, my website <laughs> is um, GW Narrations. Um, it's just because, uh, you know, G, Ginger White, you know, narrations. Because, you know, everything's like a little narration. <laughs> um, oh, what, twi Twitter. I don't remember what my Twitter handle is. But that's the one I'll share because that's what I use the most. <laughs> Okay, sounds um, good. That's at GW underscore narrations. Okay. Perfect. So we'll put the link to that in the description of this video. And thanks to everyone for joining us on the first episode of season two of Live with Swacky. And we look forward to having many other guests on our show. And we hope that you'll keep watching. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks, Val.